Ooh, it is cold here in Vegas. Okay, today we are gonna be looking at the six ways that you can color grade in Lightroom. And did you know that there is only six ways that you can actually do a color grade in Lightroom? So, quick sip of coffee, because I am still trying to get over my jet lag from my recent trip to England, which is where I'm from. Let's see if we can get through the tutorial before that coffee wears off. Here we go. So we are inside Lightroom. We are gonna be doing the six ways of color grading. Now we're gonna start off with the most basic and towards the end we're gonna be getting a lot more complex and some interesting things. But let's start off with number one and that is the white balance. That is these two sliders at the top here of the basic panel. You've got temperature and you've got tint. Basically blue to yellow, green to magenta. And you can basically slide these to get it correct. I would say always start off with the white balance. Let's use this photograph just here and we're going to use the little droplet tool here and we're going to pick something white. This image is very easy because there's lots of grey and we click on that and that is set the white balance. And it's that simple. Now you can also set the white balance by using these sliders just here by pushing it towards the yellow or the blues and that's where you can actually get creative using white balance. You don't have to use it just to set it and make it perfect. You can use it creatively. However, I would say use the white balance to set it perfectly and use all the other things which we're going to get into now to actually be creative to change the color in your image. So if there isn't very much white, let's try another image. So this image here, if there isn't very much white in an image, there's a few things you can do. You can actually zoom all the way in here and you can actually use some of these the whites of their eyes, that's a really good one to use like so. Or you can just guess and take a look here. The third way that you can do it is use this just here and you can actually use auto and it does it itself. If you have all the metadata in the image, you'll be able to select different profiles like sun, like shade, flash, blah, 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 all of those things. But that is white balance. So let's move on to item number two. And this actually lives just above white balance and it's new, okay? Well, it's not super new, but it's only been around for a year or so, maybe even less. But hold on, before we go any further, I want to thank today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Torbox. Now, Torbox is this awesome little device that can dramatically speed up your editing. So this device has a super ergonomic design. It features a whole load of fully customizable buttons, including dual wheel control. The idea for this is that you can simultaneously control things like size and flow and opacity of your brushes, including your sliders and everything. So Torbox is designed to speed up your workflow and it works with both Windows and Mac. Now right now it's available over on Indiegogo, the link is in the description and they've got a killer deal so get in there quick. And they've already sold loads of these things. Now as soon as it's launched, I'm gonna have one of these in the studio and I'm gonna test it all and I'm super excited about that. To item number two, which is the color profile, only available in Lightroom CC. So if you're using a standalone product, pro product like Lightroom 5 or something, you're not gonna have this option. But basically inside here, you can choose by using this little click button here on the left-hand panel, different ones. Now inside Lightroom, it comes with things like artistic. And you can go through here and you can select different ones. And they've really done a great job. Some of them are fairly extreme. But as you go down, you can see these are some ones that I've actually built as part of my presets. But I can go into, for example, cine stock and I can select something here. I could, for example, go into, uh, let's go, what should we go for? Daylight film. And we've got this one called morning coffee. And that's gonna completely change the image. Now, something to remember with these is it's changing the profile. So once I hit close to come out of this, no other, no edits have taken effect here. So this is kind of like a completely different layer inside Lightroom. It's not actually using any of the other develop module features. It's only using the profile, which is kind of complicated, but it's very similar to the develop module, but it applies it as a layer and then you can add things on top. Usually you want to use the profile which is accurate to your camera, but I like to get creative with it. So you can, let's try another image here. We'll go to this first one. 
and I'm going to go into profiles at the top and I'm going to click on those little squares and let's choose another one. Let's go in for the classics, okay? And look at all of these beautiful ones that I can click on here and it can really edit your image and really bring out the features of that. Hit close and it's gone. One other feature at the top is the slider. How much do you want the um, a profile to take effect? That's a pretty powerful little one just there. Now let's look at number three. This one is mega powerful. If you realize what I looked at down here, I have notes. I make notes for all of my videos. Um, so we're gonna look here at the tone curve. Now, let's start off with a tone curve. Let's choose a different image just because it's fun to look at different ones. Let's use this one for the tone curve here. And if we click on the bottom here, your tone curve might look like this, okay? Which means that you've got the highlights, okay? You've got the lights, the darks, and the shadows. Now, this doesn't affect any color. This affects the tone, which is the same as the basic panel. You're not actually changing any of the color, you're changing the highlights, the shadows, the darks, and the blacks is what you're changing, the tone of the image, not the color tone or the color grade of the image. So, if you wanna edit the color, now what you have to do is click on this little button down here, and you click on that and it changes this to what's called RGB. Okay, red, green, and blue. So let's click on this image just here to show you how this one works. So this is the base image. And what you can do here is, if I just click here, it's just changing the tone, okay? It's not actually changing any colors. But if I click, say, on reds, and if we, say, add reds to the highlights, the top end of the tone curve, look at this, we're adding all the red into the highlights. Now, I've got a long way with that, but we can, say, pull down the mid-tones of the reds, we can then go into green and do the same thing. So let's pull back those mid-tones like so. And then we've also got a blue channel. And what I'm actually gonna do is click in the middle and I'm gonna add blues to the shadows. So it's kind of a bit of a split toning effect is what we've just done. Come back to the reds, I'm gonna lift it up a little bit more here, take it out of the shadows. And now by hitting backslash before and after, look at that, I completely edited the tone of the image but I did it using the tone curve, splitting it into RGB, red, green, and blue, playing with that independently. That one is super powerful. Okay, here we go. We are now back into item number four. Item number four is the HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance. This is all about color. This panel is pretty amazing. But this one, let's actually jump into this image here because we've got all these different colors. Now, it lives on the right-hand side just here. Hue, okay, now if yours doesn't look like this, sorry, let me step back. If yours doesn't look like this, it might look like this little section at the top here where you've got your different colors that you can click through and you've got hue, saturation, and luminance. I would suggest clicking at the top like so and clicking HSL, meaning you get everything in one go. It just makes your life easier. Now. Hue changes the color. So if you look at this red one here, we're gonna be inside red. And watch when I move it, you can see all the reds in the image actually change what color they are. Now let's choose blue over here. And if I slide this, you can see I'm actually moving those colors around. So that's what hue is. It actually changes the physical color of an image, but within a range. So for example, if we go the reds will go the reds towards the pinks, the yellows towards the reds. We'll take the blues towards the purples, maybe this way. So you can see what I'm doing with this. Let's actually get away from the green. We'll go towards the yellow and towards the oranges. And now look at the before and the after. We've completely changed the tone of this image by changing the hue. Now the next one down is saturation. So how colorful is a color? Saturation being, let's look at the reds again, and let's say the saturation of the reds to zero. Boom, and now the red colors go to black and white or grayscale. So now we can start pulling out those colors. So let's imagine that we actually wanted to keep these reds, but we only wanted reds. So we'd get rid of the yellows, okay, we'd get rid of the greens, and we'd get rid of the blues, and all of a sudden this image now completely, look at the before and the after, now completely has this different feel to it which is really powerful. 
And the final thing that you've got is luminance. How much light, how reflective is a color? So let's stick with the reds, and I can say more reflective, less reflective. So you can see it changes kind of the richness of the image there. We can, we can manipulate all of these things. Okay, even though we've got rid of the color, it still knows that there's yellow there. So I can really get the yellows up, really get the greens up. And I'm almost making those other tiles kind of disappear in a way. And now let's look before and after. That is just using the HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance. So that there is how to really affect your image in a pretty dramatic way. Now let's, let me just go to one more image because I want to show you. Let's come back to this guy again. And I'm going to show you, if I hit reset, really powerful is the HSL, but be careful of your orange slider. That's this one just here. The orange slider, you can really mess somebody's skin up very easily. I would suggest, if there is a person in your photo, hue, don't move the orange slider or barely move the orange slider because you will ruin the skin tone. Saturation, often pull it down for skin tones and lift up the luminance. And that can have a nice effect on skin, but do be careful. Now, one final tip within this one here. This is a cool little trick. I will go to another image. This is very clear, reds and blues. If you don't know which color it is, we know it's red and blue, but if you weren't sure, let's use the saturation. And if I click on this little dot thing here, now if whatever I click on and slide down, it desaturates that color or adds saturation to that color. So you can see it's only affecting the red. And if I was to now select here, it would only be affecting the blues. And you can see that happen over there. So that's a pretty powerful little dot and it works for hue, saturation, and luminance. Really something awesome just there. Okay, the next one for color grading in Lightroom, and that is the split toning. Now, I love this one, but be careful because you can very quickly ruin an image. I'm talking fast. I shouldn't have drunk that coffee, right? Too much. So, so let's choose a completely different image here. Let's go to this one where we're out at the ocean. I'll hit reset on this. And what we can do is I can choose, say, yellow is going to be my hue. And I'm going to add that. So I'll add it. And you can see I'm lifting the saturation. It's adding yellow to the highlights. Now, to the shadows, I could say, let's add blue. And now when I do this, when you look at the shadows, which are the darker areas, I've added blue. Now, before and after, I actually think that did a really, really nice job. And if I was to really boost that up here and I move the shadows um, hue, you can see how it goes through all the different hues and I can add whatever color I want to whatever section of the image. I've got the balance slider. Do I want it to affect the shadows more or the highlights more? That's basically what that means. So very powerful, but do be careful because that one, if you go too high on the saturation, you can ruin an image. I like to stay below 25 on that. So just take that into account. And you reset that image. And the final way, this is the only other way that you can do it. And this is probably the hardest one to do and one that you might want to be careful with. That is the calibration. It's all the way at the bottom. And this is basically so you could calibrate to the camera that you have. But you can use it for effects as well. So let's go to this image just here. Something which is very popular, which is that orange and teal look. You can do that very easily inside the calibration. And this is how you do it. Red primary hue, you go up. Red primary saturation, you go down. Green, don't touch. Blue primary hue, go down. Booyah. That's it. These numbers, you can do it as much as you want. Obviously, the more extreme you go, the more extreme effect it has. Um, it's up to you how you want to do that. Um, I personally go somewhere in the middle like that, and that's how it looks. Let's just do another image to show you. Come back to this one. I'm going to reset this image completely. And if I go up, down, down, orange and teal, just like that. Let's look at this image. I love this photograph here. And reset this, sorry. And I go up, down, down, orange and teal. So that there is how you can do that awesome orange and teal look inside Lightroom super quick. Just be careful, don't push it too much, and don't overuse it because it's kind of been used by a lot of people at the moment. 
So that there is my six ways to color grade inside Lightroom. Did I miss anything? If you think there is another way to color grade inside Lightroom, please let me know. Write it in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. So on a final thought, I wanna thank our sponsor for today's video, it was Torbox. Remember, click on the link in the description and you can get, on, get your hands on one of those super cheap right now. Thanks so much for watching. This is Ed Gregory from Photos in Color.com.